this video, I will demonstrate how to seamlessly replace your Windows operating system with Linux. If you've chosen to click on this video, it suggests you're already familiar with the Linux OS. However, before proceeding with the Linux installation on your computer, I recommend watching my previous video where I extensively explain and compare the Windows versus Linux operating systems. This foundational knowledge will enhance your understanding. If you know a bit about what Linux is and are eager to proceed with the installation, stay tuned. And the first thing we're going to do is copy the Windows activation key. This key will be valuable in case you decide to revert to Windows in the future. To obtain your Windows activation key, open your terminal as an administrator and run the following command. Copy your generated key and save it in a secure location. Before taking any action, it's crucial to back up your important files as the process will result in the erasure of everything on your system. It's important to note that this video doesn't cover installing Linux on a virtual machine or alongside Windows. Instead, I will guide you through installing Linux and removing Windows permanently, leaving your computer with only one operating system. Let's get started. Our initial step is to disable BitLocker. Launch your terminal as an administrator and execute this command to know the status of your BitLocker encryption. If it indicates protection is on, it implies that we need to disable it and I'll elaborate on the reasons shortly. Now run this command to disable BitLocker. You can find these commands in the video description your BitLocker encryption is now disabled. You can verify the status by running the previous command again. Here, you can see the protection is off. Great job! Now, go ahead and close your terminal. Get ready for the next step. We'll now download Ubuntu, an excellent Linux operating system for beginners. Once you've familiarized yourself with Ubuntu, you can certainly explore other Linux-based operating systems or distributions. To download Ubuntu, simply search for Ubuntu and click on the official link from the Ubuntu website. Once there, click on the Download button located at the top of the page. And click on the green button labelled Get Ubuntu Desktop. Here, we have two versions of Ubuntu available for download. The first is the LTS version, which stands for Long Term Support. In simple terms, the LTS is the stable version of Ubuntu. At the bottom of this page, you will find the beta version. You can download either version according to your preference. Here, you can read the system requirements for installation. Click the download button and the download process will begin. I'll cancel this download now since I've already downloaded the file. Next, we need to download the Rufus software to create a bootable USB drive. Open your web browser and search for Rufus. Click on the official Rufus website link. Scroll down to the bottom of the page to see the download options. I'll download the portable version. Portable software doesn't require installation. You can simply open it by double-clicking on the executable file. Click below the link to download the software. This website has some glitches. The text is not visible here. So, now we have downloaded these two files. Here, we have Rufus software and Ubuntu ISO file. Launch Rufus by double-clicking its icon. Dismiss the update prompt by clicking No. Rufus, our chosen tool, is now ready. Now, insert your pen drive into the USB port. Here, Rufus will automatically detect your USB drive. Click the Select button and browse for your Ubuntu ISO file. Keep all the settings as default and click Start. For these pop-ups, keep the recommended settings. Here, it's giving a warning that all data on your USB drive will be formatted, so be sure to back up the data on your USB flash drive. The process of creating your USB drive bootable has begun. This may take a few minutes, so please be patient and wait for its completion.
Now your bootable USB drive is ready. Next, we need to disable the Secure Boot option in the BIOS settings. If you're familiar with how to boot into the BIOS, that's great. But if not, open your browser and search for How to boot your device into BIOS. Certainly, you should customize your search based on your specific device and manufacturer. Look for a method in the search results. In my case, I'll need to turn off my computer, then turn it on and repeatedly press the ESC or ESCAPE key. Now my laptop's turned off. Here I pressed the power button. When it lights up, I immediately press the ESCAPE key repeatedly. You have to follow the same steps for your computer. Now I'm getting this blue screen and it's indicating me to press the F10 key for BIOS. Once you're in the BIOS settings, locate the Secure Boot option, which might be found in either the Boot Options or Security section. Enable the USB Boot option and disable Secure Boot. As the touchpad or mouse is disabled, in the BIOS settings, you would have to use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate through the options. Now, disable the Secure Boot. Now go to the Exit section and select the Save Changes and Exit option. Now, when your computer automatically restarts, continuously press the key corresponding to your PC to access the boot menu. You can search online for the specific key if needed. If you see a message like this, enter the displayed code and hit Enter. Once you have entered the boot menu, select the USB drive as the boot device to start your computer from the USB drive. Your computer will now boot into Ubuntu. Choose the option Try or Install Ubuntu and hit Enter. Our device is booting into Ubuntu. We are currently booted into Ubuntu and I've opened the screen recorder for demonstration purposes. Feel free to explore Ubuntu here. Now, let's initiate the installation process by selecting your system language and clicking Next. Here we got two options, Install Ubuntu and Try Ubuntu. If you simply want to test it without installation, you can choose Try Ubuntu. However, in our case, we are proceeding with the installation of Ubuntu. Choose your keyboard layout, and I'd recommend giving it a quick test before moving on. Press different keys to ensure everything's functioning properly before you proceed to the next step. Here you can connect with Wi-Fi or set up offline. You don't need to update the Ubuntu installer, but of course, you can. You have two choices, default installation and full installation. Choose default if you want less pre-installed software and go for full if you want more, including office tools and a video player. I'm getting a warning that my computer is not plugged in, but it should be. Make sure your computer is connected to power. Here we're going to select erase disk and install Ubuntu. This option will erase everything on your system, including your Windows OS. Manual partitioning is for installing it alongside Windows. If you have some knowledge about partitioning and file systems, you can choose this option. However, we will select the Erase Disk option. Click the Install button, then choose your time zone by clicking your country on the map. Finally, complete the account setup process by providing your name, computer's name, and the desired username. Then enter your password. Once you have filled the information, click Next. Choose your preferred theme. And finally, we have our last Next button, hit that. The installation process has been started, it will take a few minutes. Once your installation is complete, click the Restart Now button. Your computer will restart and boot into Ubuntu. Welcome to your new journey. If you encounter any errors or issues during the Ubuntu installation process, feel free to ask in the comments. If you've successfully installed Ubuntu, 
please consider giving this video a thumbs up. For guidance on customizing your Ubuntu experience and unlocking its full potential, check out this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day or a wonderful night.